Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. A few weeks ago at ISC in Hamburg, uh, Todd and Greg from the SPAC open source team announced the SPAC binary cache. Now, SPAC's already been having a really big impact on our community because it, it removes all the undifferentiated heavy lifting involved in just like assembling all the stuff you need to build what your application. Um, and, and I mean, that, that in and of itself has been a huge contribution to the community. It's, it's a project that we've been really happy to be involved in and be happy to support. But now this, this SPAC binary cache takes this thing to a whole new level because you're, you're actually getting access to build binaries uh, from, you know, from a giant cache that, that they're assembling and amassing and it's going to keep getting larger. Uh, this, this, this binary cache is available across the whole internet for everybody to use, whether you're in clouds or out of clouds and anywhere. Um, it's going to cut 95% of the time uh, uh, away from, from building applications, right? Uh, this, is, it's, this is profound. Anyway, so Greg and I were going to actually show this off and record a tech short while we're on, the, on the, the show floor, on the expo floor at ISC, but the internet was horribly unreliable. Uh, uh, and so we just couldn't get a good connection to be able to do that. So we waited until we were both back in the comfort of our own uh, home offices, and here we are. Um, and we recorded this just a couple of days ago. So hope you get a lot out of it, uh, and I hope you're enjoying using SPAC. Sounds good. So what, what I'm going to demo is all the way from I decided I have some cool science I want to run to spin up an AWS instance, set it up, log into that instance, use SPAC to install some scientific software, and all the way to I'm ready to actually do my science. Basically, all of the stuff that you probably don't care too much about doing, you just want it to be done. And yeah. usually it takes long enough that you need to go out to lunch or maybe even you know, go home and sleep and come back. Yeah. And I'm going to show how you can do it quick enough that you've only really got time to grab a cup of coffee. Yeah. So I'm going to get started on that. The first thing I need to do is I need to launch an AWS instance, an EC2 instance in this case. And I'm going to call it Tech Short Demo. We're going to run it on Amazon Linux. And just for fun, to show off, we're going to run it on ARM. Uh, this, which which one? C6, C7, what do you think? Let's go for a, go for a C7. There we go, okay. and that's the CPU that's got um, SVE, um, DDR5 RAM. I mean, the it is it is a beast. So I've set that up to use uh, my SSH credentials to log in, and I have uh, launched the instance. Click on that instance to get its IP address. It's initializing a little bit. It may take. I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to hop over to the terminal. May take a couple of minutes. <laughs> and I've got this handy I'm going to SSH to tech short. Yes, I really want to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install a couple of dependencies for SPAC. So yum install dash y we use git to get spac and we need a compiler for spac to work even if we're going to bootstrap a compiler we've got to have one to start with yeah so that's just some very basic stuff there are other spac dependencies you might need for various features uh, but this is the absolute minimum to get going um, and now i'm going to clone spac from github and SPAC is designed to work out of the box from cloning. Um, if you had to use an installer to install your install tool, we figured that might be a bit of a problem. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to CD to SPAC, and then I'm going to check out the most recent release. Uh, that's v0.18.0 was announced at ISC. Yep. And I'm going to source the SPAC setup script, and that puts SPAC in your path and sets up for some shell integration for uh, some other features. And now I can get started. I can say uh, SPAC mirror add. I'm going to set up a binary mirror. And 
I'm going to point it to binaries.spac.io slash develop. Right, and that's and, going to get the, get the develop branch, which is a bit faster moving, right? Yeah, so this is going to get all of the binaries that we have ever published on our moving head of develop. Uh, this is a much kind of fuller binary release Yep. Um, than, than what you get with just one release. Um, and I'm going to say spec build cache keys. And now I'm going to spec install Gromax. And now I'll go back and talk a little about what we did. So first we set up spec to know about our binaries. Um, and I used the develop branch, which is all the binaries we've published. Uh, you can also point that at just one release of spec. Say I want binaries.spac.io slash releases slash v0.18.0. And you'll right. get just and what's releases. the what's the relationship between the build cache and the spec release itself? Um, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. So we right. run um, we run CI on every merge to our develop branch that um, that generates the binaries on develop. And when we cut a release from our develop branch, we run CI on that branch as well, and that generates the binaries uh, for that branch. Right. Got it. And, 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 and I mean, if I, if I sit here today doing exactly, and people are going to follow this uh, out there on the interwebs and they're going to follow your steps here. Let's say that they get themselves set up with Gromax and it's Gromax version, uh, you know, uh, N. Um, now, two years from now, SPAC's going to grow on up, Gromax is going to grow on up, but for their science, they need to maintain you know, uh, uh, provenance directly back to the to the binaries they used. Are they going to be able to always get hold of Gromax version N, always out of the binary cache and never get, you know, they're never going to run into uh, being forced to update? Um, yeah, that's exactly it. You can always use develop. Um, if you're using a really old SPAC, some of the newer binaries in develop might not work for you. But if you right. check out a particular release of SPAC, you can always use the binaries associated with that release. We're not going to go back and update those or anything. Yeah, right. Got it. Um, now, in terms of trusting the the keys that we sign these binaries with, um, we publish the keys in the in the uh, binary mirror, and we also publish them on spac.github.io slash keys. So you can go to that site, and you can download the keys there and make sure that they're the same keys that you got from the mirror before you go to install anything. Right. So um, you're sure that you're getting the good oil. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, two separate sources. Those websites are not hosted the same way. They'd have to both be taken down for someone to uh, to really hose you that way. Yeah, right. Exactly. Now, the the what's what's basic what's populating the cache at the moment? It is mostly at this point, it is primarily libraries, right? Um, it's primarily. It's primarily libraries. There are a few. Um, there are a few executables in there. You know, applications, right? We're we're installing Gromax. Yep. Um, Warfs in there. There's some others. Um, once this is done, I can show you kind of everything that's in there, and we can we can browse through it. You can also go to uh, cache.spac.io. Yeah, and in fact, I can uh, I can put that up on the screen here. There it is, cache.spac.io. Yeah, and if you go to develop. You can uh, you can browse what's available um, in an oh, in a, an uh, online format, um, and then you can also run spac build cache list um, on your on your local machine uh, to see it there. Right. So there's so this is a good yeah. This is an incredibly good way of actually of actually browsing the entire. Uh, the entire collection to see if what you're looking for is already in the cache. So what's going on here? Yeah. Um, on the screen, right? We're we're still installing. Um, like I said, this will take about long enough to go make a cup of coffee. Um, but if I scroll back up through the output here, uh, the first thing that happens is we bootstrap Klingo, and that's internally what SPAC uses to resolve the dependencies. Then we bootstrap Patch Elf from source. Uh, this is the they're not library and executable that we use to uh, to manage changes in the path of these uh, binaries. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, 
everything just gets installed from binaries. You see, you know, Zlib at the very bottom of the stack. We found it in the build cache. We check the signature, we install it, and we're all the way through and just finished Gromax. Whoa. And it's done. And it's done. We've got okay. Gromax. We can spack load Gromax. If you were standing in the queue at Starbucks, you wouldn't have got served that fast. So faster than a coffee. That is super. Back CD dash I Gromax. And and look at that. Uh, look at that directory. You know, Darcy blows. And so we could actually straight away we could actually just start spinning up some Gromax workloads. And yep. if this was a if this was an HPC cluster, we've got you know uh, uh, our guys Sean, Evan, the rest of the team, Ollie. They can show you how to do how to do this on parallel cluster. It's not exactly a hard set of steps to set this up on parallel cluster. Yeah, yeah. So this was a demo for obviously you know something small enough that you just want to run it on a single node. Yeah. Uh, the spin up time for parallel cluster, like you said, is a little slower, but not that much. And yeah. then you can run it across whatever scale you want to. And so if you're not using Gromax, you're using something else. You go to SPAC install whatever application you you want. Sure, you might not install the application from binary. You might have to wait for that to build from source. But a lot of the same libraries are going into all of these applications. And all of oh, those yeah. libraries are in the binary cache. And if, uh, if SPAC doesn't find it in the binary cache, SPAC will absolutely seamlessly roll over to installing it from source. And right. so you can get a hybrid build where you build what you need to, but you don't reinvent the wheel. You don't spend that time to rebuild anything that we built in our CI process. Right. And and this is what the, why, the, why that stands to reason. I mean, this is the dependency graph of Wharf. I mean, yeah. absolute stacks of these libraries down here are common to so many other scientific applications. I mean, there's... There's oh, yeah. a zillion of these things, but they turn up everywhere. So so I think, was it Todd that, that ran the numbers on this? And he thinks that this eliminates around about 95% of the compile time in most for most of the applications in SPAC's repo? Um, um, but yeah, we're seeing 20x speed ups in, in going from I want this application to I can run this application. That That is insane. Uh, I've been around in HPC a long time, and I'm used to spending days pulling the source bundles together uh, and getting everything to compile, uh, and of course, getting all of the right compilers in place to do the compiling, because it's such a diabolical process to go through. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I've I've blown weeks just getting getting software stacks ready for, you know, for my users. So, fact that you can do this in a few minutes. Super cool. <laughs> this is not just AWS. AWS just makes a very great demo to uh, spin up an instance and get running very quickly. Yeah, it makes it easy. And look, this is a this is a project that we're really, really happy to be able to support you guys on because this is. Uh, I mean, it's going to make a big impact to our customers, but it's good. You know, but I think SPAC in general. You know, we see our mission as removing the undifferentiated heavy lifting, all of the crap work that people shouldn't have to do to get to their primary goal. And that's what you guys are doing, just just writ large. So you're doing it for the entire scientific community. It's a no brainer to want to support this. So um, yeah, glad I think you guys are doing it on the SPAC team. We see our our goal in in fairly similar terms. There's a bunch of this work that everyone has had to duplicate for a long time. And you mentioned, you know, collating all of the source files that you needed and uh -huh. running those builds. But then there's also the coming to know all of the arcana about a particular build such that you can actually build the configuration of it that you want anyway um hey look thanks very much for coming along and doing this thank you for producing spac and being such an important part of the team that's 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 oh, of this course thing going. you know it's fun to uh to feel like we're really making a difference and uh thanks for having me on i always like to uh to talk about it spread the word we'll see you back here soon thanks very much Thank you. Um, and for everybody else out there, if there's other topics you want to see us deep dive on, if there was something that Greg said that you think is interesting, uh, come and find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. If you got some value out of this, click the like button or subscribe to the channel and tell your friends. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, thanks, Greg. We'll talk to you soon.